knowledge is expanding exponentially. And it's changing all the time. Right? And we know that they're going to have to deal with this interdisciplinary table to solve these problems. But we also know from research that transfer, the ability to, move, to, to learn an idea in a particular realm and transfer it to a different one, we're really bad at it. Humans are really bad at it. And we also know that motivation is exceptionally important to learning. So you've got your 20 or 30 or 15 little kids, and each one of them has different motivations for different things, and that's critical for them for their learning. And now you've got to, you've got to keep track of 30 little motivational schemes, you know, 30 little motivational paths, and each one of those paths is expanding exponentially and changing all the time. And by the way, if you don't succeed, society is hosed. <laughs> oh, and there's these SOLs. <laughs> right? They have to pass these tests. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's enough to make you go, whoa. Whoa. That's a lot. I have a, a colleague who is literally on fire academically. He is at the top of his game academically. He just won one of the most prestigious prizes, the Wolf Prize, in genomics. He has 20, he has millions and millions of dollars worth of grants. A beautiful lab, 20 different PhD students that are, you know, PhD students clamoring to work with this guy. And he was telling me he himself, with all his help and all the resources in the world, he cannot keep up with his own discipline, genomics, which is a subdiscipline of a subdiscipline of a subdiscipline of biology. He himself cannot keep up with the amount of knowledge that's, that is being created and the degree to which it's changing. But you guys are supposed to keep up with five or ten fields, along with all this other stuff. That's tough. That's a durable problem. How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? All right, well, thank you very much. <laughs> come here to depress you. I think we need some help. We need some help. And we need to think differently about it. You know, I, I, I used to live in the Silicon Valley and I commuted from uh, San Francisco to Palo Alto, which is about a, you know, on a, on a, on a good day, it's a you know 25 minute drive. But it took, took about an hour and a half to commute. Um, and, you know, the traffic is horrible, like it is in a lot of places. Like, like here. <laughs> um, and so the traffic is horrible, so, so what do we do? We, we build more lanes, right? And, you know, so we went, we went I think, from five lanes to seven lanes on each side of, of the freeway there. And um, it was great. I mean, then there was no traffic. Right? <laughs> no, there was just as much traffic getting worse, right? So this kind of thinking doesn't work, does it? It doesn't work. We've got to change how we think about this thing. You can't keep running faster to keep up with the speed. That's crazy. That's insane. It doesn't work. You can't keep cramming, keep trying to get more. You're not going to keep up with it. It's growing exponentially. Are you exponential? Is anyone exponential? Right? It's changing rapidly and growing exponentially. You can't keep up with it. And even if you could keep up with it now, by the time your kids are grown up, it's going to have changed. So we've got to get at, the, as Debbie's been saying, we've got to get at what are the things that they're going to remember when they've forgotten the facts that they learned? <coughs> what are those things? What are those timeless things? Those universal things? Those things that, that are going to be the same in the future? Like thinking skills. What are those thinking skills that are going to be the same? That's, that's where we have to be looking. We have to be looking at universal patterns that are going to be the same. 
that are going to take our kids into the future.